Okay, everybody, let's talk about histology. So histology is not the most exciting, but the good news is you do not have to know it too much for the board exam, but there are definitely certain points that I'm going to talk about in this PowerPoint that you do have to know, and I'm going to go through, through those with you, okay? So I'm gonna make it a little bit easier. So let me just go through the slides here and switch this up. Okay, so basically you need to know some of the key points and I've put them in the PowerPoints. I'm not going to go everything by it word for word because you guys can do that, but I'm going to try to explain it a bit easier so it makes more sense. So basically for histology, you need to know how the teeth and the tooth buds under the gums are starting to form and, but try not to look into it too aggressively, but just kind of know the basics such as this. So for example, when you're talking about the, um, the odontoblast, the ameloblast, kind of the different cells, this is what it's talking about. So the ectomesenchymal cells are the odontoblast, and that kind of starts with the dental papilla. Simple, okay? And then you need to know that it lies below something called the enamel organ. The dental papilla appears after eight to 10 weeks. The dental papilla gives rise to the dentin and the pulp of a tooth. So basically everything. You have the enamel organ, which is where, where everything sits. And then you have a number of cells that help to pinpoint different parts of the tooth. So we know we have the enamel, we have the dentin, we have the papilla, we have the nerve, we have all kinds of things. So this is what this is starting to talk about. So the enamel organ, the dental papilla, and the dental follicle together forms one unit called the tooth um, germ. So the tooth germ is one unit. You need to know this. This is important because all the tissues of a tooth and its supporting structures um, from this are into different cellular kind of aggregations. So they go into different things. I have a couple images that might make more sense in a second, but basically the tooth germ, think everything. So the enamel organ, the dental papilla, the dental follicle are all called the tooth um, germ. So it's one. And then the next PowerPoint here. So the tooth development or Odontogenesis um, is the complex process by which the teeth um, form. Sorry, I have a couple different words here that I have to fix because I keep getting confused myself. But they they form embryonic cells and they grow and they erupt into the mouth. Okay, so for human teeth to have a healthy oral environment, all parts of the tooth must develop um, during appropriate stages. So the baby teeth start to form between the sixth and the eighth week of prenatal development and the permanent teeth begin to form in the um, 20th week. So these are key points to know. You know how there are a lot of people where certain teeth haven't developed properly or they have a cleft palate, they have missing teeth, their teeth aren't very healthy, they have thin enamel, you know, thin this, thin that. Well, they might not have developed properly. They might have not developed in a healthy oral environment. So the key points to know here are the primary teeth start to form between the sixth and the eighth week and then um, of, of um, prenatal um, development <clears throat> and the permanent teeth begin to form in the 20th week. If they don't, if it's too soon or too late, this is when problems happen. So, and then we talk about the four different stages of tooth development. So there's four stages that have to happen underneath everything for these tooth, um, teeth, sorry, to actually form. The teeth and the surrounding tissues and the surrounding structures. So you have the um, bud, cap, and the bell stages. Depending on the textbook, they might call it number three, number four. We talk about it being early, and then we talk about it being late. So I'm going to go through, um, through these a little bit for you guys, okay? So the bud stage is the initiation when things happen. The cap stage is the first time you can identify the three different parts, the three different areas you can kind of see what's happening. The um, early stage is the IEE, which I'll explain that, 
makes the shape of the future crown. So everybody thinks it's the root that forms first, but it's actually the crown, believe it or not. And then in the later stage, calcified tissue starts to happen. So young enamel, but it's not fully developed yet. Okay, so this is kind of a good image. I had left the, the link here for you to kind of have a look. So in case you're somebody that needs to see certain images, this might help you more. And I found this off of, I want to Pinterest, but I quite liked it because you can see how the different stages here are starting to form. Okay, so this is kind of a good one to look at. Um, and then you have in the cap stage, again, it's just kind of showing you different things forming. So remember how we talked about the enamel organ. We talked about the dental papilla. Well, what about the dental follicle? So this is the different cells and different things that are happening at that time. So I quite like this image as well. And then the next stage here, again, look at all the different things happening. This is when you can really start to see things coming together. So we have the dental follicle, we have the outer enamel epithelium, Look at all these different layers that are happening. I find in this bottom image, it's very prominent where the outer um, enamel epithelium is. You see this layer here, but then look at the inner enamel epithelium, that like purple kind of look to it, right? But then you have the stellite reticulum and then the um, stratum intermedium. So see how those are kind of close as well. These type of images have been on the board exam before. So it's nice to be able to study them, look at them and really decide kind of where things are. And then another form. So this is just basically showing you guys what's happening, but in a different stage. Um, the bud stage, the cap, and then the last stage, of course, um, uh, the bell stage. So it kind of shows you different things in a different way. I don't know if you find this easier to study, memorize, look at, or something like this. You can basically see how things start to form from the top, but then eventually things start coming together. So you guys, we have the outer enamel epithelium, OEE, -E, and then we have the inner enamel epithelium. You need to know the differences here. Remember when we had looked at this one here, see how it says the outer enamel epithelium, but then we have the inner. So this is kind of showing you more of the different cells that are involved. This you have to know, these are the things they might ask you on the board exam. And then this is just kind of a good way to show you, well, what does a simple um, cuboidal epithelium look like? I wouldn't have known unless I saw this image here. So this is what it looks like versus the next one. So see how it's kind of showing you um, um, simple cuboidal, um, simple squamous. These are hard to say. See how they look a little bit different, very, very slightly, right? And then again, it's going to show you more prominent how things look here. Um, typically, they might have something like this on the board exam too, so it's good to know the differences. But then look, see how this image here looks so much more different than this one, okay? This is what the um, columnar looks like. So see how it's like this. I don't know how else to explain it. They're kind of longer, right? Whereas the simple cuboidal is in like circles and it's round and it doesn't look like this. <laughs> so that's kind of a good way to explain it. The stellate reticulum, these are star shaped cells. The OEE, which again is the outer enamel epithelium and the stellate reticulum in late crown development break up and there will, there will be um, remnants of both. So that's kind of all you have to know for this. On the board exam, they might say, what are star-shaped cells? And you can go stellate reticulum. Is it really that easy? Yes, it can be. So that's all you have to know for that one there. And then the dental laminas, there are different ones. So I put those down here for you to make sure to kind of look through that, know the different ones. Um, certain terms to remember. So at the beginning, when I started talking about the different types of cells, these are the terms you need to know for that. So I put them in here to make it even easier. 
Um, some of them are going to be related to enamel. Some of them are going to be related to dentin. You definitely need to know those. Um, and then you guys, the dental papilla. On the board exam, they like to mention dental papilla a lot for whatever reason. So these are the key points about the dental papilla that I've put in here for you. So during the cap stage, this is when you can really start to see the dental papilla. It is for the area inside the inner enamel epithelium that eventually becomes the dental pulp. When enamel formation is complete, the space is no longer referred to as the dental papilla and is called the dental pulp. And even I make that mistake sometimes where I'll be talking about the dental papilla, but what I mean is the dental pulp because I, I, um, I teach histology. So I tend to get confused myself, but this is something you need to know you guys. So I'll say this again. When enamel formation is complete, the space is no longer referred to as a dental papilla, it's called the dental pulp. So on the board exam, if they were talking, if they're talking about the dental papilla, this is before the enamel formation is complete. The enamel has to form, you know, these things happen, but it's called the dental papilla. But once the enamel formation is complete and proper, it's now called the dental pulp in the inner enamel epithelium. Does that make sense? So something to keep in mind. And then the different stages of the ameloblasts. This is talking about enamel, okay? So basically you have the, um, the morphogenic stage, the organizing stage, the, uh, the formative or the secretory stage, um, the, the mature stage, the protective stage. So all of these stages. Now, admittedly, you guys, they haven't asked the different stages on the board exam before, but I just, I wanted to put them in here in case you wanted to know them. And so you know that the, the formation of enamel doesn't just happen. It takes time. There's many different stages, right? So just something to be aware of. So where does the enamel start to form? It starts to form at the cusp tip and incisal edges. So remember how I said a lot of people think the, um, the root forms first. I said that, right? The root forms first. Well, the crown actually forms first. What is the crown? That's the enamel. So it starts to form at the cusp tips and the incisal edges, okay? So these cells are moving away from the DEJ in late Crown development. Everything's forming, everything's happening. The um, cuboidal cells found in the late bell stage between the columnar ameloblasts, the inner enamel um, epithelium, and the stellate reticulum. So this is the um, stratum intermedium. This appears as a layer in the late cap and the early bell stage. It seems to aid in the enamel production. So the stratum intermedium just helps to aid in the enamel being formed. It just kind of helps to finish the process, if that makes sense. So this is the cuboidal cells found in the late bell stage between the columnar ameloblasts in the inner enamel epithelium and the stellate reticulum. Lots of different things, whoops, to remember. As the enamel and dentin are laid down, the basement membrane is caught in between two layers and actually starts to separate away. So the basement membrane um, breaks down and is the future location of the DEJ. So if they ask about the basement membrane on the board exam, you're going to know, okay, this is where the um, DEJ is going to be, the dental enamel uh, junction. So where the dentin and the enamel meet there was a basement membrane that breaks away, but that's where the dentin and the enamel meet. Well, I should do it this way, I suppose. Enamel and dentin meet. <laughs> so that's how that happens, but it needs to break away for that to happen. And then, okay, so crown formation. Remember, the crown forms first. So there's many different things happening. Um, remember the ectomesenchymal stem cells of the dental papilla differentiate into odontoblasts. And remember, it's called um, the dental papilla because the enamel hasn't formed completely yet. Once it does, it is now uh, the dentinal pulp. So the dental papilla is before the enamel has formed completely. And then pre-dentin um, actually starts to form together. 
And then um, calcification of predentin yields dentin. So you need the predentin to calcify for the dentin to form, which I don't know, I guess it's kind of common sense because it can't form right away. Things have to start to build up, calcify, and then that's when it gets thicker and stronger. Um, pre omeloblasts stop mitosis, okay? So this preformation of enamel, the preformation of dentin, it takes time. It is young enamel until things are completely formed. Um, I had left you guys a couple links to look at because I find histology can be kind of confusing, kind of boring. We're talking about the bud cap and the bell stages. I kept it very simple in all of these PowerPoints for you, okay? This is as simple as it gets, but I tell my students all the time, study histology, read it over, but then kind of don't worry about it. I want you guys to focus on other things such as pharmacology, oral pathology, medical emergencies. I talk about all of this, but I don't want you guys not to study histology because if you don't study histology, then you're, you're leaving it behind and then you're definitely going to get it wrong on the exam if they ask one histology question or if they ask five. So you definitely need to study it. Study this PowerPoint, understand the different types of cells, look at those images to see what's happening, and that's all you have to know, okay, for the board exam. Don't look into it too much, but don't not study it because then you're going to get the questions wrong, okay? So look through that. If you guys have any questions, let me know, and I'll see you guys in the next one.